Martin, I think it's fair to say the atmosphere on Monday night was fantastic from the fans, but the result was even better. I think the, the, the first half was probably better than ever before, you know, we, we, we had the three goals and of course they helped us a bit. But when we came on the pitch, was my assistants, they said, you know, it was a different atmosphere. It was, it was so noisy, you couldn't understand each other. So that was, that was nice, you know, it was a real derby game and that is what you would love to uh, be for the game. Of course, it was the same against Spurs, you know, you, you feel Bobby's a more. Maybe we could do something and you, you wouldn't like that, you know, not because he's Bobby Zamora, but because of the result and, and uh, the importance of the game. But it was almost perfect. And then we gave them the present, the Easter present with the 3-1. And then at half time you realise that if they would score another goal, you could, you know, you can, you could uh, end up with a, probably a totally different game. And that is what happened because then we had the sending off as well, 12 minutes before the end. And we def we had to defend with our you know lives to protect that lead. But every time when we take the lead, we probably never lost over the last two years. But I, I don't I don't know if that is hundred percent. But I feel that of course we gave away leads to have to end up with a draw, but not with a defeat. And mm -hmm. before the game, people said every time when Berbatov scores, you you seem to win. So that must be a good stat as well. So I was quite confident, but after the sending off, you know, and after the substitution with De Jaga, uh, when we played so well, we couldn't get behind them, and that is the problem, you know. If they, of course, uh, it was not a, a big change, but they put uh, two strikers up front, they played four for two, and we couldn't get out of our own half because we lack a bit of pace sometimes up front, especially without De Jaga, and that was a problem. Uh, normally you play your first pass forward and then you keep it and then everyone can support and penetrate and play with runners and that is what we used to do away from home for example but at home you try to keep the initiative you try to play in their half and every time when we seem to do that we play well but uh, of course if you're one nil up or two nil up uh, other teams they, they have to come up with a solution and they put you under pressure and that is probably the only weakness I can see that that we couldn't get out of our half. So we have to try to do something about it. Dimitar was given man of the match by Sky Sports, but he said that he would hand it over to Mark Schwarzer for that penalty save. It, it really was a team performance, wasn't it? The resilience of the defence, especially after the sending off. I think uh, Dimitar must be fed up himself, you know, with all the praise after the game, because we look like a one-man team. And of course, if you look at the players we've got and uh, the performances, we aren't, you know. We need a keeper, we need a back four. Uh, even look at uh, Giorgio, for example, he's 36. Uh, of course, he made a few mistakes in the last game, but before, you know, he was he was fantastic. Uh, Steve Sidwell, uh, Damien Duff, you know, he's getting older, but he looks younger, you know. So Dimitar was, of course, uh, the main man in the first half, but in the second half, of course, Dimitar realises that that you need other players and you need your team as well. And, uh, you know, I'm always happy if he recognises that and if he uh, come, comes up with that praise after the game, because it's about teamwork and he knows that. Ashkan went off injured. Um, it looked quite a bad injury from, from the replays on the television. How is he and is he fit? He won't be involved. He uh, sprained his ankle bad time. So he will be out for the next week. I'm still hoping that he can uh, join us next week for Aston Villa. But uh, it's a certainty that he won't be involved against Newcastle. And Mladen also, that's the same? Mladen did his, uh, had a problem with his hamstring, a little tear. So he won't be uh, involved in the next couple of games either. Ashkan and Steve Sidwell have been regular starters for you over the last few games. What, what will you do to, to find a solution? It's always good to have a settled team. So we played with a very settled team over the last couple of months because don't forget, people say last couple of weeks, well, we do well since West Brom away from home. We lost against the two uh, Manchester uh, teams and for the rest, we, you know, we did uh, fantastic. So uh, that is disappointing that you have to change it. But we've got uh, one or two players like Vim Pong, Eno, they are waiting, you know, to get their chance. And uh, Sitwell did a, a very good job for us. But hopefully, you know, it's it, it's not a lot of changes. You know, we have to uh, change the team in probably two positions, and hopefully, uh, we will come up with the same um, 
performances like we did uh, over the last couple of months away from home. St James's Park, obviously a difficult place to go. It's, it's like a cauldron there on really good occasions. Does the Europa League hinder them, given that they will be having played all of these extra games? Do you think it makes a difference or is that not any of your focus at all? Sometimes you get a rhythm and uh, that will give you good performances and points and sometimes it will cost you. Depends on the strength of your uh, squad and they've got five or six players uh, not playing but if they're injured you know they could end up with a problem but if they're only there to, to be rested like Theo Dave, for example, he's a very good player. He was not involved yesterday. So they've got uh, a few players, you know, right back, he can come in. Uh, on the left and on the right, they've got a few substitutions. But overall, what you saw uh, with Newcastle, that they're a fantastic team, and they showed that last year. But this year is different, so I don't know. You know, I can't analyse that problem. Maybe it was because of the Europa League. I don't know. Maybe it was because of injuries. So I feel that uh, it could be a problem for them. That is why we would like to give them a very good, mm. you know, hard game from the start. But uh, if they can use four or five other players, I think it's only about rhythm and they will fight for their chance. Uh, Anita, for example, my player from Ajax, was not involved a lot, so he could start and he's a terrific little player. So uh, uh, we have to wait and see. 39 points. I know that all the pundits out there are saying Fulham is safe now. H how important is it, A, to keep the momentum going and B, just to get more points on the board for the end of this season? I always say I can't, I can't uh, have that look in my glass bowl. Sometimes it looks like it, but I can't. But on the other hand, you know that as there were a few seasons that 43, 44 points mm -hmm. was just enough. There was one season over the last 10 years that 36 points was enough. In the main, in general, 40 points is probably the benchmark for, for uh, all the teams. And we've got 39 points. So a lot of teams would like to swap with us. Uh, and uh, I would like to swap with teams who are above us. But I feel that we are in a good, good position now. We had a very good result against Spurs. QPR, Derby game, three points. We did well away from home. But I still feel that we need... Uh, and that is not enough, one win. We would like to go uh, places like we did last year. But to be safe, I, I'm really not sure, you know. I think we are safe, but it's not 100%. So that is why we, we, need, we need a few wins. And I think we will have a few wins.